When I'm doing that, I am feeling, this is going to be kind of weird because I'm laid back talking to you, but whatever. When I'm doing that here, I'm feeling right up on top, like this upper portion. I can literally tell. I can feel it coming off my clavicle. And I'm thinking about that. I'm coming up, tucking the chin a little bit, coming up, and I'm squeezing, you know, right here, this upper part of the chest. Hey, how's it going today? I don't have to check the day today. It's Friday the 13th, right? Bad things are supposed to happen today. Uh, in the gym, hopefully bad things don't happen though. I hope this day stays safe and sound. Hopefully there's no Jason Voorhees, no Freddy Krueger, no Hellraiser. I don't need those guys coming in here today. I'm just trying to get a pump. I'm just trying to build, grow, strengthen. I'm not trying to get killed today. So Friday the 13th, I am safe and sound in the old muscle barn here. The only thing that's happening outside is it is downpouring like crazy. Uh, if you live in Minnesota right now, you know what I'm talking about. It's been raining for 24 hours, but this morning it's been raining really hard. Uh, yeah, we're supposed to get two and a half inches maybe over the weekend. I was going to do some more home improvement stuff outside over the weekend, but I'm probably going to have to squash those plans and probably just do some relaxing. I feel like that's not going to be bad though. After today, I'm going to need some recovery time. I feel like that's not going to be a bad thing. Sometimes, you know, you just have to do that. But anyways, Friday the 13th, this is training vlog, day eight, GST size. I'm in the middle of 25 weeks of growth right now, and it's a pull slash overhead press day. So I'm working the back muscles. I'm working the biceps. I'm working the shoulders. I'm working everything upper body, guys, honestly, minus abs. I'm not doing abs today, but... Shoulders, chest, back, upper back, triceps, biceps. Like I said, essentially all of it. And uh, yeah, I'm ready. I'm looking forward to it. I had my half pound of some steak, some nice sirloin steak done medium rare. I had a cup and a half of oats. I'm locked and loaded. I'm ready to go. I've got the gorilla mode jungle juice in me. That's my last scoop. And that was a sad, that was a sad moment. When I opened that cap, saw there was just a little bit in there. That anti-moisture packet just sitting in there looking like the biggest thing in there. Powder looking all small. And then you got to scrape the bottom of the container with the scooper hoping that you get a scoop. I got a scoop, but that was it. So that Gorilla Mode, that one's cashed out. It's done. So now it's just going to be the straight nitric from here on out with a with a caffeine pill on the side, of course. All right, I got nothing else to say. I'm glad you're here. Let's get into it. Pull, overhead press. Let's get that pump on. Let's get that grow on. It's time to go. One working set in. You can tell I'm doing standing overhead presses today. You're used to seeing me doing those seated 60, 75 degree barbell presses for my front delts, my overhead pressing. Um, I'm not doing that today. And the reason I'm not doing that is because, like I said, my shoulder, you know, it's coming back. I'd say it's 95%. I'm hitting overhead presses. I'm really not feeling it during the lift. I, I can tell it's not 100% though. So I'm not pushing it 100%. I'm gonna adapt a little bit on this one today. So I'm going with standing. It's easier for me to get a little closer grip uh, when I'm standing. 
And that's what I want. I want closer grip. I'm avoiding this motion here, which places a little more stress on the shoulders. I'm pulling things in. It's a uh, tricep, you know, it gets the triceps going heavily as well. You think about the biomechanics of it. Your elbows bend a little more at the bottom. Triceps work to straighten out those elbows. But it's also kind of like doing a, 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 a front raise. You know, with your, if you think about the top part of your arm only from the elbow to the shoulder, it's doing the same thing that it's doing when you do a front raise. You see, you just watch the top part of my arm there versus here. It's doing the same thing. It's front delt dominant. So I'm doing a more closer grip, standing overhead press. It's the right move for me today and that's why I'm doing it. And it's also a 90% one rep max day, but I'm certainly, you know, you can tell, I'm certainly, I'm not hitting that. Um, I'm just gonna do 95 pounds. I warmed up past that. I warmed up to 105 for like five reps, which felt fine. But I did not wanna get greedy. So I'm not gonna get greedy today. 95 pounds, I'm gonna do more reps, uh, get that pump going, get the volume in. And you can tell, you know, my shoulders are already fuller than they were uh, during the intro, no doubt. So, and that's just one working set in and uh, three warm up sets in. So I'm gonna get into number two and it's just gonna be the same thing. It's just gonna be 10 to 12 reps, 95 pounds, closer grip. Let's get into that. All right, what I figured I'd do here is I would show you a little better illustration of where my grip's at. So your bar is gonna have these markers on it, right? Where it switches from the smooth to the knurled portion, this inner portion, this inner switch. I'm taking my thumb and I'm going on the first joint of, from, from the end of my thumb. I'm putting it right on that switch, straight out. And then from there, I'm just grabbing. To me, for me, that's a closer grip on the overhead press. You can see it is wider than shoulders, but not much. You know, my thumbs that are, are at about the outer edge of my shoulders here. All right, let's get this set. We should be able to get a nice double digit set in. So that was a nice double digit set. 12 reps maybe, something like that, 11, 12. Uh, and that's, that felt great again. I feel the shoulders slightly and that's exactly why I'm not pushing it and I'm not really trying to fully extend to the top of the reps either. I'm just holding off like an inch at the top. Uh, other than that, you know, that was a solid set. Good shoulder work, controlled, breathing out towards the top of each rep. Breathing in, holding the air in, staying braced during the other portion of the rep. And that's the lowering portion and at least half of the lifting portion. Okay, catch my breath. We'll do set number three and then we'll move on. We got some pulling to get done today. Obviously it's pull overhead press day. So we got plenty of pulling in the mix. Okay, final set coming up, overhead presses. Like I said, 10 to 12 reps, nice solid form, holding off a little bit at the top, closer grip to really focus on those front delts and also get the triceps firing as well.
Ugh. All right, quality set there again. Breathing out towards the top, and then you hear me pulling the air right away after I push out. So then I'm braced, coming down. Halfway up, I'm still braced, and then I exhale towards the top. I never start breathing out or exhaling at the bottom of my reps. To me, you know, I like to forcefully exhale. So, th and that's a quick, that's a quick action, you know, just whew, that's quick. My reps are going to take a little longer than that. So if I start right at the bottom, I'm going to be fully exhaled, you know, halfway up, three quarters of the way up. I don't want that. I want to exhale through the completion of the lift. So that's my breathing pattern. Deep breath before you start the rep, hold it all the way down, hold it still to about here, and then forcefully exhale and forcefully finish up the rep. All right, we're moving on. We got a pull down. I'm not gonna do pull ups today. I don't believe. I'm gonna try things out, see how it feels. But pull ups, you know, especially the wide grip that I did last time, weighted, that's the thing that really exacerbated this shoulder. So I'm gonna hold off on that. That would just be, you know, so dumb of me to just ego lift and push through it. If I do a pull up, it's gonna be a neutral grip or a chin up grip, but I think I might just take it a little bit easier than that today. Let's see what happens. Let's get into some warm ups and play it by feel. All right, I tried out a couple sets of these close grip, neutral grip pull downs, and they worked great. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit a set here. Lighter set, again, so more reps, not a 90% one rep max day on this one. Just playing it smart. I just finished up that first set. What I want to tell you about that first set, and you should take this to heart, you should use it in your own pull downs, is if you noticed, you know, I was getting that really nice range of motion at the top. Every time I came up, you'll, you'll notice if you watch it back, and you'll see it in the second set too. I'm actually coming up and I'm pushing forward. I'm leaning forward a little bit, and that's just extending the range of motion even farther. It's stretching out my lat, giving me a nice shoulder stretch as well. It's almost like a dead hang position, which is a great stretch for the shoulders and the lats. So I'm getting that little, you know, half second active stretch with each rep, 10 to 12 reps, 10 to 12 short active stretches. And it's just the little things like that, just the details. These are the things that, of course, I want to teach you about like the macro form cues, the big ones, the ones that are foundational. But these micro form cues are going to allow you to get a little more out of each exercise. And through these vlogs and just through me being in the moment and being reminded, oh yeah, I'm doing this right now. And this is something that I want to, I want to spread. I want to share with you. So this is one of those micro cues, especially when you're doing pull downs at the top, you can get a little more range of motion. You get a little active stretch each time. If you let your upper body float forward and you're going to feel like the attachment that you're holding onto is right above your head if not behind it. That's how you know you're getting that extra range of motion and that little active stretch. All right, that's my micro tip for the day. So I was thinking this angle might show you a little bit of that forward lean that I was just talking about.
So after you saw that set, did you see what I was talking about? You know, when I was coming up, you saw me push forward a little bit, kind of like push my hat bill into the cable pulley post, because that's as far as I could push forward. But there's no doubt, I got extra range of motion from that. And I, I'm feeling that when I'm doing the lifts. So you had to have seen that. That's what I want you to do. Like I said, you can do that with all the lifts. I, I would say it's, I'd say it's probably most difficult to do with a chin up grip, an underhand grip. Just because your, your anatomy just doesn't let you push forward as much, you can't really feel like you're getting in between your arms as much when, you're, when your arms are flipped like this and your elbows are pushed forward. Um, neutral grip feels good. Overhand grip really feels good. You, you can really get that stretch. And uh, yeah, that's it. But I just want to make sure that you saw that and, uh, and just remember it. Like remember it the next time you do pull downs, try it and get back to me. Just let me know how it felt. I bet you it felt great. All right, one more set. These are going really nice. Shoulders feeling awesome. Uh, zero pain, zero tension, anything like that. But I'm still glad that I didn't go uh, hardcore and just, you know, blast through it. I probably would end up with not so good of a, a result, like some Friday the 13th shit, to be honest. Okay, let's get this done, move on. Final set, here we go. Watch for the forward lean. Here, it, it's right here. All right, I had a question from Tyler today. Now, Tyler wants to know how to hit his upper chest. So Tyler, I'm talking right to you right here. This is one move that really hits your upper chest hard and you wouldn't think it does because it's a close grip bench press. But I'm telling you, uh, you know, close grip bench press isn't just for the front delts. It's not just for the triceps. It's also for the chest and you give it a little bit of an incline. Right now I'm doing a 15 degree incline and I promise, you know, you're gonna feel that right off the clavicular head of your pec and that's those upper chest muscles they're coming off your clavicles that's why they're called the clavicular heads kind of a weird word right i always i'm always like a little bit happy when i can pronounce it right so i just did it twice in a row feeling pretty good so let's get into this set and i'm going to show you i'll do the, i'll do the reps and then afterwards i'll tell you right where i feel it so closer grip Closer grip on a bench does not mean this, because when you come down like this, your wrists get all contorted. That's not how you do it. You can go around shoulder width grip for a close grip bench press. <clears throat> now I like to go head up, tuck my chin into that upper chest divot area. It just allows me to connect with it. When I'm doing that, I am feeling, this is gonna be kind of weird because I'm laid back talking to you, but whatever. When I'm doing that here, I'm feeling 
right up on top, like this upper portion. I can literally tell, I can feel it coming off my clavicle. And I'm thinking about that. I'm coming up, tucking the chin a little bit, coming up and I'm squeezing, you know, right here, this upper part of the chest. Like right now, I don't feel the lower part of my chest, but I feel the upper. And that's because this move, this move does so well at activating your upper chest. And it's kind of a secret because most people would not think of the close grip as an upper chest activator, uh, but it is. So this is a portion of me answering your question, Tyler. Let's get on to uh, a little more information later. All right, Tyler, I'm back, man. You know, I'm gonna dedicate this rest period to you and answer your question. You wanted to know about upper chest. I just told you a little bit, showed you an illustration of the 15 degree close grip. But what I wanna do is I wanna give you more exercises. You're asking for the exercises that work your upper chest. So what you wanna do, you wanna to try to have an incline when you're doing your pressing movements. The science says that anything over a 30 degree incline is gonna to start to disproportionately activate your front delt over your upper chest and your chest muscles. So when you're, when you're targeting upper chest, you need to keep that in mind. 15 degrees, 30 degrees. Now you can go over that, you're still gonna work your upper chest. I'm, I'm a big fan of 45 degrees. I do still feel that in my upper chest, but you just have to know that your front delts are also gonna be activated. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a little, a little story. Now I went on like a upper chest bonanza for like you know two, three months, and I really blew up my upper chest, but I was doing like 45 degree bench, I was doing 60 degree bench, barbell and dumbbell. And the funny thing is, is that the muscle that grew the most, or the muscle group I should say, that, that grew the most from that, upper chest grew, like no doubt. But my front delts, just really blew up and they grew at a, at a more accelerated rate than those upper pecs. And that's because, you know, based on the science, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, yes, it was working my upper chest, but it was really working my front delts more. And that's just some anecdotal evidence that I went through that two to three month phase of just crushing the upper chest, really going for it. But I took the incline, I, you know, I took the incline a little bit too high. And I got great results, but you're, you're focused on upper chest only. So 30 degrees, 15 degrees, dumbbell presses, bench presses. When you're doing a, when you're doing a, like a barbell press, 15 degrees or 30 degrees, you want to approach it like a bench press. Assuming you're not doing the close grip that I just showed you. 15 degree and 30 degree uh, standard grip is going to work great. And you're going to be able to move a great amount of weight and you're going to be able to put the pressure, put the stimulus on those clavicular heads, the upper chest muscles. Um, and when you do that with dumbbells too, just come down and apart to get that upper chest stretch and then back up and kind of close together. Your dumbbell pattern is kind of like a triangle or a dome. It's just apart as you come down, up as you, or together as you come up, sorry. Now, of course you can isolate you can isolate as well to your upper chest. And the same principle is gonna apply. 15 degrees, 30 degrees, that's gonna be dumbbell flies, uh, cable flies, like cable flies on a bench. You, you probably can't do that too well on a pec tech machine because those really don't have a, uh, like an adjustable back pad. If you were thinking about doing that on a pec tech, you know, you'd be straight up and down. So it's kind of hard to get the angle, the incline angle you'd have to lean forward a lot actually. And then you'd be, able to, you'd, you'd be able to hit your upper chest, but you really can't do that on a pec deck because then you're gonna lose uh, range of motion. You might not even be able to hang onto the handles when you lean forward. It just wouldn't work that well. So if you're gonna do isolation exercises for your upper chest, I would, I would focus on 15 or 30 degree dumbbell flies or 15 to 30 degree cable uh, chest flies and you're gonna to have to be on a bench for each one of those, obviously. All right, Tyler, uh, you said you heard some weird BS about anatomy and upper chest. I'm not sure what you heard. I, I, didn't, I didn't see your reply to that. Um, I asked you that question back, but that's how you hit your upper chest, buddy. It's 15, 30 degree, sometimes 45 degree, dumbbell press, barbell press. Again, 15 or 30 degree, sometimes 45 degree, dumbbell flies, cable flies. And then I'm a huge fan of this close grip, 15 degree bench press. All right. 
I think I answered your question. I hope your upper chest blows up because having that upper chest shelf, it's, uh, it's something that makes you smile when you're in a shirt and you got that pop coming right off the chest. You can't have a champion's chest, as I like to call it, without having the upper chest too. Don't be lower chest dominant. It looks bad. It looks like you have man boobs. Get that upper chest involved in. I'm glad that you're trying to do that. And you will have that. Listen to me. Follow the advice. A couple months down the road, you're going to see that upper chest development. All right, it's time for me to go. You know I took a long rest period, so this next set's going to be amazing. And I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Have I mentioned that I love this move? Man, this is like turned into one of my favorite exercises for upper body, for chest development, and just feeling, feeling dialed in with my presses. 15 degree close grip bench press. It's kind of a sleeper, it came out of nowhere. I'm a big fan. All right, this one's just feeling so good today that I need to do a volume set. Close grip bench press. Uh, baby, I can't walk away from you today. Give me some more here. Here we go. That's what I needed right there. Get the volume set in when you can. If you're, if you're feeling an exercise and like I said, I, I couldn't walk away from this one today. Another 20 reps at around hundred pounds. I got that extra two grand in, in volume. Whew. All right. I love you, but I gotta walk away. So I really have to admit, you know, I got into the zone once I started these bent barbell rows and I went through the rest of the workout without saying a word. No tips, no tricks, no comments. So I'm coming back in as I edit this and I'm gonna drop some tips and comments for each exercise. All right, so barbell rows. The thing that I'm focusing on here is pulling with my elbows up and back, elbows towards my back pocket. My grip is not super wide as you can see, it's just outside of hip width. I don't give a shit how much my elbows bend when I'm pulling that bar up. I care where my elbows go. That's what matters the most to me and that's how I engage the back. That's how I take the biceps out of it as much as possible. That's how I view my hands, my forearms as hooks, just strapped to the bar, gripping the bar, holding the bar. That's all they're doing. And I'm engaging my back. I'm engaging my teres muscles, my rhomboids, my lats, and my rear delts. I'm really focused on that band that's basically from rear delt down to about the insertion of my lats. Everything in between that band across my backside is what I'm thinking about there. And pulling with my elbows and forgetting about everything else is what allows me to do that. <sighs>
Now you know I'm hitting uh, arms twice weekly here. That means I got to do a bicep isolation today. That means I got to do a tricep isolation today. What we're looking at here is the classic dumbbell curls, cross body variation. This is really lighting up those upper forearm muscles and of course my biceps as well. Yeah, you see a little swing. There's nothing wrong with that. A little momentum is good for hammer curls. It really allows me to get more volume in. I'm able to get more reps in and I'm controlling my swing. I'm controlling my momentum here. I'm controlling the negative as well. These are the thoughts that I'm thinking about when I'm doing these sweet dumbbell hammer curls. Now, I'm thinking about forearms, like I said, the upper forearm, the brachioradialis muscle. I'm thinking about biceps, of course. This is a curl variation. Why would I not think about biceps? And I'm just doing the best I can to use a little body English, little momentum, but keep the focus on those areas that I just mentioned. And I'm gonna go through three sets of these. I'm gonna shut up now. I'm gonna let you just take in the reps, learn from the form, and I can't wait for you to try these on your own. Derek, man, what the heck you put in this gorilla mode? I, uh, I literally imagined that I was a gorilla hanging there. Arms forward, gorilla arms, doing curls. Man, good job, good job, Derek. <laughs> and last but definitely not least, we've got some tricep isolation. This is the underhand grip straight bar press down. Now, when I finish this set, you're gonna see me tap my arm. The point that I tap, that's the part that I'm trying to focus on here. That's the part that I'm trying to build up. That tricep head right off the elbow, right above the elbow. This is an excellent move for doing that. I haven't done this in a long time, but I gotta admit, I always used to do all three grip styles with my press downs, overhand, neutral, and underhand grip. I don't know why I fell off of underhand grip for a long time, and by a long time, I mean like 10 years. But I'm bringing these back I'm gonna see if these develop that head of the tricep that's just above the elbow. And I'm gonna tap it right here. There we go. So, when you're doing these, you need to just focus on letting the triceps do the work. Try not to use a whole lot of momentum here. Try not to uh, stand over the weight too much. You wanna make it tough to straighten out your arm so you have resistance at all points. Of course, at the top, halfway through, and then if you're standing back a little bit and you're making sure that cable, that cable actually pulls back off the pulley itself at the bottom, that's gonna keep constant tension at the bottom because the cable's gonna wanna pull back on your triceps, but your triceps have to stay flexed and flex enough to get it straight in the first place. All right, same thing with curls. I'm just gonna let you watch the form. And again, I hope you try this on your own. This is a good one. I've done this for a long time put many years in with this type of move. I said I took a little break from it. It doesn't mean I don't like it. It's a really good move.
I'm definitely satisfied with today. It was a really good day, actually, like a really, um, I'm going to say fulfilling day. And that's because I got a really nice gift from the muse today. The muse, I love the muse, man. Like she gives me these gifts and you only get gifts from the muse when you're putting in work and you're breaking through the resistance. If you're familiar with the concepts, you know, resistance is anything that gets in your way of moving forward, of putting in work towards a goal. And when you can break the resistance, when you can just, you know, knock it out, push it down, plow through it, the muse is this mythical being that comes and she drops off gifts to you. She presents gifts to you. And it's a reward. It's a personal reward. Today that happened to me uh, just before I started this video. Just before, actually after the intro, just before I got into the training session, I jumped on my TikTok quick and I, I did a little TikTok crew check-in and I just said, hey, I'm doing a video, a workout vlog today, a training vlog. I'm going to be doing a training chat and I want my training chat today to be answering questions from people who have questions. And so I did a little Q&A on there. I got a question from Tyler. Tyler asked about upper chest training and how to hit that and said that he heard some BS about some chest anatomy and things like that. So I broke through resistance today because I said, hey, I'm going to do this TikTok quick. And my reward was the muse, you know, she brought Tyler. He asked a question. I love the question. And it turned into my training chat for the day, that upper chest portion of this vlog. And that's just a lesson. This happens all the time to me. And it happens to you too. If you put in the work and if you bust through resistance, you know, resistance can be so many things. Resistance is anything that gets in your way, that gets in your mind, that gets put into your schedule, that prevents you or tries to prevent you from moving forward, taking action, putting in work towards a goal. So we all have resistance every single day. You know, getting out of bed is resistance. Getting dressed, that's resistance. The little things are also resistance, but there's also big things like overcoming an addiction. You know, that's a resistance point as well. But I promise, you know, when you do that, uh, good things are going to happen. You know, the muse, she's mythical, but she shows up and she drops gifts. It happens to me all the time. I, I, I can't emphasize it enough. And you'll get those gifts. Get into the gym and breaking the resistance of saying, yeah, I don't really feel like training today. I don't really feel like lifting today. There's rewards. There's instant rewards that get, that get given to you. When you do get to the gym and you do put in the work, there's midterm rewards and there's long-term rewards. The gym is great for calling up the muse, calling on the muse. And uh, yeah, I think, you know, that's, that's what I want to close on today. Break the resistance, get visited by the muse, and reap the benefits. That's it. It's time for me to eat. My stomach's actually growling. It's a long training day, big training day. And I'm ready for food. You know how it goes. I'll see you next time. Have a good Friday night. Enjoy yourself. See you later. Bye-bye.